Hey guys, uh, I want to apologize for this video starts for two things. I'm going to have a lot of pauses in this video, and um, you're going to hear me drinking a lot. Uh, that's because as I was setting this video up and getting my thoughts together, I ate something that did not agree with my stomach, and uh, it just came up about five minutes ago. And I'm not sick, but uh, I have acid reflux, and uh, every once in a while I'll put something in there, and it does not react well. And uh, after about a couple hours, <clears throat> it comes back up. So I just got done <laughs> coughing up most of my dinner. <coughs> so if I sound a little coughy and kind of out of breath, I literally just got done barfing <laughs> about five minutes ago. And uh, I'll be drinking a lot of water as I'm saying this. But like I said, I'm fine. It happens well, every couple of months or whenever I randomly eat something. Anyway, the other thing is um, with the recent changes to YouTube, you guys have all seen them, I'm sure. Um, my interest in posting videos has really dropped off. Uh, I'm just, I really hated the new layout and the new Google Plus comment system is actually even worse than the layout because the layouts were always changing but I don't think the Google Plus thing is going away anytime soon because let's face it Google Plus used to be an old joke about uh, well that was uh, a, a, I think the joke I got told was hey did you know there's an online simulation of what it's like to be in the apocalypse or the post nuclear holocaust and they go oh, yeah I go yeah be on Google Plus you know the idea that nobody was there so I guess Google's decided that we're gonna find some way to use Google Plus come hell or high water and uh, you can't reply to previous posts at least not as easily and the comments don't show up and and the uh, the ad revenue system has been was screwed up about six months ago and uh, that really pissed a lot of people off and this isn't making things any better anyway I'm gonna put a note at the bottom if you want to skip channel update and all the pointless stuff you can go right to there and get right to the main topic of this video which is going to be why you should buy an AK-74 so if you want to just get to the topic just click the little uh, little uh, my hand at you little button there or wherever I'm going to end up putting it probably down there and it'll skip you forward and you can just get started so anyway uh, that was really pissing me off um, I had a really big issue with my job last month where um, something I had screwed up on um, I thought it would actually cost me my job and uh, me and my boss talked it out and uh, it got resolved and I still got my job which is good because finding a job right now is a pain in the ass and it was something I did, it was an honest mistake and uh, let that be a lesson to you kids, when you screw up at work don't lie, to cover it up, just admit to it 99% of the time uh, <clears throat> you'll, you'll be fine but um, my job's been really busy and uh, with the holidays coming up it's, it's going to be even busier and uh, to be perfectly honest I'm, I've bought a few little gun things here or there, but uh, I know I like to have a video where I go shooting, and the last time I was going to go shooting was last weekend, and I was going to shoot the Grand, like I promised, and I had stuff come up at work at the last minute, and I had to work one day that weekend, and that ruined it, and uh, this weekend I wasn't planning on going shooting, but same thing happened, I had stuff come up at work, and tomorrow is Sunday, and i got to do about four hours worth of work on a Sunday, so uh, yeah, you know, it's it's making things difficult but it's hard to find a job that pays more than a crappy eight to thirteen dollars an hour right now so since I'm making more than double that you know I guess I kinda have to stick through it until the economy picks up anyway um, I've got a couple of things I'm gonna show you guys here but like I said the main topic of this video is why you should buy an AK-74 and uh, reasons that I came up with this video is well recently <clears throat> well, of course last month the job thing was one problem um, I actually sold one of my rifles. Uh, some of you guys will see, <laughs> or I've seen my, <clears throat> sorry, uh, video with the 14.5 uh, inch with the fixed flash hider. And I uh, had an old friend of mine back when I was a young squirt who uh, really wanted an AR-15 and wanted a lightweight one. I wanted an A2 style and uh, I had uh, a financial difficulty with a car of mine that was in an accident. And uh, he bought it off me and I got my car fixed and uh, he got a new rifle and he's a really good guy down in Florida and uh, wanted a rifle to protect his family with and something for short range so he was really happy with it and took it out and shot it <clears throat> and uh, he really likes it so far so good on him 
So I sold that rifle. Um, the reason is, is because I would planned on sometime in the future getting an SBR, and since I wouldn't need that kind of rifle in an S and an SBR, I decided to go ahead and sell it, and that'll be in the near future. What I'll probably do is, like I said, buy an SBR, and uh, I'll probably actually make a pistol and just get a pistol. That way I can have it, test the upper, and shoot it. And then sometime in the future, send me buy a, a lower and get it engraved and send out for the paperwork. It seems to be what a lot of guys with AR-15 uh, SBRs do. And uh, that way you can have the fun of shooting it, playing with it, while the ATF takes its sweet time. Um, although I've seen a lot of guys just use that arm brace thing that's come out that you totally aren't supposed to use as a stock, but pretty much is. Um, <clears throat> so maybe I'll just stick with that. Anyway, we were talking about this, and... Uh, he was talking about uh, you know different guns he'd had, and he wanted an AR, and I was explaining an AR and AK with the differences, and um, it really got me. Every time we we talk about AKs, uh, I ended up going back to this gun, despite the fact that I've got you know two AK forty seven semi auto guns, and I say that this was my favorite AK rifle, and uh, <clears throat> he really said why, and I started listing off reasons. And uh, I thought I started changing his mind about his purchase. And I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's good salesmanship. Talk the guy out of you, you know, out of the customer, out of the product he wants because you got something else that's way more awesome." But anyway, um, you know, I talked to him about it, and uh, he bought the AR. But you know, after he left, and um, I was going through my guns, I remember all the times I've shot this gun and how inexpensive the ammo is, and a few other things. I'm like, you know, this is a really good rifle. And for all you guys out there who are considering an AK, I usually go for the 47. Um, I think you should take a really strong look at AK-74 models, and I'm going to explain why to why you should. And uh, not this in the AK-47. <clears throat> There's a few things it's good at that this gun can't do, but uh, I really want to cover why I like this this 74 model and why I think you should get one. Okay, so first things first, our representative gun here is going to be a Gewehr Works AK-74 side folder. <clears throat> you guys have seen before. This is all Bulgarian Circle 10. It's an excellent gun. I've had it for going on two years now. It's been a really, really good gun. I'm really happy with it. <clears throat> Never had a single problem with it. Great quality build. Um, I actually bought this from another YouTuber. Uh, his channel name is Dragon Breath. I don't think he makes videos anymore, but uh, he used to make some really nice videos that had a couple of unique things on here, but I think he quit a couple of years ago making videos. Anyway, originally he had um, a fixed stop Century model that he had um, put gun coat on and fit, changed a few things. And I really liked it, and the price was good, but uh, he sold that right before um, I could get a hold of him. But he did have this one, and uh, basically he bought a crank and was really getting into ARs and decided he wanted to do ARs instead of AKs. So uh, I bought this off of him. That was kind of a long story, but anyway, um, he told me about it, who was made, who made it, and a few other things. And uh, I took it out and shot it <clears throat> first time. And I really liked it, and then I bought a case of ammo and shot it, and I really liked it. And I've since then I've shot Polish Tunnel, and, which is a variant of this rifle, with just a few minor modifications, and some other rifles similar to it. And uh, I've shot the Century uh, AK-74. They used to be really common, but now they're kind of hard to find. And uh, I really liked the AK-74, and uh, I've had a couple of Arsenal models too, and uh, that's why I decided to make this video, because when most people talk about buying an AK semi-auto, they always talk about the 47, unless they've already got some knowledge, or they've been on an AK forum and done some research. And even then, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, a choice between, I guess if you're a truck person, you know, Ford or Chevy, if you're not a bias by brand, you know, or, you know which one do I want, or, um... Or uh, and maybe if you're baseball, which is a better team throughout history, the Yankees or the Red Sox, you know. Uh, I don't know. Can't really find a good analogy. Anyway, why well, you should buy an AK-74. And uh, really, I'm going to compare this to your standard AK-47, but I am also going to go and compare it to other common semi-automatic rifles. Uh, most likely would be, the, uh, of course, the AR-15 as a good comparison. Um, first off, uh, compared to standard 47s, uh, the 74 is actually a, a quite a bit lighter. Even compared to like my lightweight Wasser, um, this is a really light rifle, and at least in its standard configuration. And uh, with a folding stock, you would think that steel folding stock would make it heavy, but it does not. It's a very lightweight rifle. 
Um, you kind of have to pick it up to play with it, but even loaded, it's about six pounds. It's pretty light for a non-AR-15 style rifle. Second thing is, <clears throat> it's just as reliable as the AK-47 for the most part. Uh, major difference, of course, is the cartridge. The 7.62 cartridge is tapered, and the 5.45 is straight cartridge. So the tapering makes the 47 a little bit more reliable because it's easier for the gun to extract, um, whereas the straight cartridge can get stuck. Uh, and however, in my experience shooting the cheapest, crappiest Chinese and Russian surplus 545, especially this gun, I've never had a round stuck in the chamber. I've had uh, <clears throat> never had one in my 762 by 39 guns either. But uh, but you know, like for a straight case gun, never had that problem. Also, as far as parts availability, um, there's a lot of parts for the AK-47, and uh, there's a lot of parts for the AK-74, and about 90% of the parts are interchangeable. Uh, only difference really between the two guns, for the most part, is the barrel, the bolt. I think the bolt carrier might even be interchangeable with that, but the barrel, the bolt, I mean, it might not be. So we'll just go the barrel for sure, the bolt for sure. I think the bolt carrier is, uh, I think I'll just go with it's different. And, um, uh, you know, the, the trunnion, obviously, to put the gun together is different, and the receiver is different because of the smaller round, so it needs a different size for the magazine well. But pistol grip, you know, the hand guards, you know, all that kind of stuff uh, is all interchangeable. So anything that you know, things that you can put on a 47, you can put on a 74 with little to no modification, <clears throat> which is nice. And, uh, of course, another thing is that the 74 comes with this muzzle brake that actually works really well for the unlarged version for the 47. Oh, you can't take this off directly and put it on the 47 obviously because it's a different size uh, caliber round, but the design has been upsized for the 47. So if you want the reliability of an AK-47, you don't really lose anything with the 74. Um, parts compatibility is also, as I said, and uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, best part of buying 74 is the ammunition is very inexpensive uh, even today um, although 762 by 39 is getting pretty close uh, 545 you can still buy a thousand rounds of it for less than two hundred dollars in a lot of cases which is unbelievably cheap uh, you can sometimes get 762 by 39 for that price but you won't get and you won't get 556 for that price at all you're usually looking at 300 400 dollars sometimes for a good 556 brass so, uh, you know, if you like to shoot center fire a lot, 545 is the way to go. <clears throat> I had somebody leave me a comment saying that they thought the uh, 545 was like the hipster round of, of firearms, you know, just because of, you know, it's, it's, it's known, but it's still, like, not quite as popular as the other two. So, I don't know if I'd go that far with it, with it. You know, I don't think it deserves glasses and to be pretentious or anything, but it's definitely a little more oddball, uh, even... You know, most stores carry the other two, 7.62 and 5.56, but uh, even like Academy very rarely carries 5.45 or usually has one brand of it. And of course, you can't find any match for it. And uh, I don't know anybody who actually reloads for it. I don't even know if you can buy bullets for it. So, uh, you know, I, I get what he was saying, but uh, I think you might be reaching on it for that one. So, anyway, this is the best side is it's reliable. Um, it's light. It's lighter than the 47s. It's almost as light, if not lighter, than most AR-15s. Um, it shoots inexpensive ammo. Accuracy is improved over the 47, although it still will not be as accurate as the AR-15. Um, of course, it doesn't have any of the AR-15's modularity. For the most part, it's still a 47 design. Um, the round is a good round, although don't let the AK fanboys tell you that it's so much better than the 5.56 because that's bullshit. They both rounds perform about the same as far as lethality goes. The Taliban poison bullet thing is the thing that always gets brought up. <clears throat> I would like to remind you at the time, the Taliban were fighting against the Russians, and the Taliban had fought against the British and the Greeks and a bunch of other people and had never been and had never gone up against at the present time the five five six round, which very well could have been called, called the poison bullet by them had they run into it. So, you know, the 545 is a good round. It's better than 762 by 39, in my opinion, for, you know, taking down a person over the, yeah, you know, like I said, over the 762 by 39. As far as performance goes, it's equal to 556 once shot out of the same style gun. Now, of course, this being an AK platform, it's going to be less accurate 
and have less velocity than say a 20 inch barrel AR-15 or even a 16 inch barrel AR-15 the 5.56 is going to outperform it but uh, we're getting into academics here for the most part we'll, you know, we'll say the performance is pretty similar between the two guns in practical shooting. Now the difficulty um, really comes up between, these, between this gun and the other two is, is really the hardest part is getting one. Um, they're not as common as the uh, 47s and nothing near as common as the AR-15s. Now a lot of well-known AK manufacturers make 74 style rifles, Waffenworks, Century, Arsenal, uh, this is Gewehrwerks, Works which isn't really a well-known brand but it's out there. Um, Krebs also makes them and uh, so they're, they're made but they just you know you can't walk really into a gun store and pick one up most of the time. Um, used to be you could get the Segas and convert them too. That's also a good one if you can get one but you really you can't find them so most of the time you'll have to order one or you can go with another option here and that would be See here, huh? I hope it's not all rusty. You can get the parts and build one yourself. This is an AK-74 receiver. Some of you guys have seen this before. I've had it for a while. Uh, originally, I was going to build a gun for my brother, but uh, and of course, you guys saw mine at bottom that Yugo, and I don't think he really need, wants a 74. Needs a 74, and uh, I've been hanging on to it trying to figure out just what the heck I'm going to do with it, and. Uh, I don't know, I thought about make, getting a crank-off kit, and then I really wanted one of those K92 crank-offs just to have something different, but I don't think that'll work because the receiver is made for the uh, 545 magazines, and that's 762, and then I was wondering if I could just have somebody milling out, and, uh, and, uh, open that. and then it's $800 for just the crank kit, and that doesn't include the barrel, and then the barrels all suck unless you get one of the Blue Jack barrels, and that guy doesn't ever, only makes them like twice a year. And, uh, so, um, I may just sit on it for a while, and maybe I'll sell it or trade it for something, or maybe I'll build a gun out of it. Um, if I wanted another 74, I'd probably get a fixed stock version. I don't know why I need another side folder, but, um, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, I'm kind of getting off topic here. Um, so, I know this video seems kind of scatterbrained. I apologize. I usually read out a, a script. This is kind of done on the cuff because I'd realized it's been a month since I did any videos. So I just want to give you guys something to hold you over with, but uh, something that was relevant and something I didn't see too often. Um, one of the major detractors, though, for right now, is the magazines. Um, they're they're all good except for the Pro Mags. They're all good in the Tapcos. Problem is, is, these magazines used to cost you ten bucks a piece. Now you're lucky to find them for thirty dollars. In the past year, or two years, they've just they disappeared. It used to be you could buy a pack of four of these, Bulgarian with steel feed lips in them. They're, they're polymer with steel feed lips for 40 bucks, and man, I God, I wish I'd kicked myself. I could have bought them. I luckily kind of saw it coming and bought a whole crap load of 74. I've got probably 20 74 mags, despite the fact I have one 74. Um, and, I, and I really wanted a bunch of them, so I bought the Bulgarian ones, I bought the Polish ones, I bought um, the Arsenal made Bulgarian ones, and really it was the color. And I still don't have two of the other tans, the fire brick red. And the uh, like saddle tan, or there's two, there's two other like brownish colors I don't have, but I've got everything else, including the really rare uh, OD Green magazines, and then I've got the Polish and Raiden and the, the um, Tannel mags and the Bulgarian, and then I've got some of the Bake Lights. You guys have seen them. Uh, you can look at my mag video and see that. I don't really discuss all these mags, but this is one downside. But Magpul is coming out with 47 magazine for sure. They've already had pictures of it. It was supposed to be at the end of summer, although it's into summer, it's getting into fall, it's going to be winter here pretty soon, if it isn't already, and they still haven't shipped it out, but you know, they are in the middle of moving out of uh, pot smoking, now communist behind the lines, Colorado. So, you know, you can't really blame them for getting a little behind on product releases. But that being the said, the 47, I would imagine it's not going to take a whole lot of changes to make a 74. And if Magpul's making a 74 mag, especially for around the $20 price that they do for the AR mags and everything else, then this is definitely going to be a good way to go. And the prices on these mags may drop again, <clears throat> even though they're not going to be any more common. People aren't going to be willing to pay $30 for that when they can get an American-made Magpul quality mag for. $15.99, $12.99, you know, in the future. Now, they're making 74 mags yet, but I get the feeling there's a big enough market for 47s 
and they are making them for AR-10s, and there's more people with 74s, I think, out there than AR-10s, so hopefully, Magpul, if you're watching this, if you make a 47 mag and then make a steel up version, you could sell yourself a lot of 74 mags for probably not a whole lot of retooling money, so <clears> there <throat> is one downside to buying a 74. Um, but the working action is the same as any AK, which I'll show you. Check, check the magazine. Yes, the magazine has bullets in it. The chamber is, of course, empty because I don't keep my guns loaded. But for all you safety sallies who want to wear, you can wear it. So, action is the same as any AK, of course. Pull it back, charge it, let it go, pull the trigger, pew, pew, pew. It's not any different than the 47. Of course, the safety works the same way. And I'm going to put the magazine back in it. Yes, it's got, it still has bullets in it, and you can go cry. It's not going to go off sitting there <clears throat> uncharged and with the safety on. So, um, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, if you're looking at an AK, um, I would like you to consider the 74 model. I think for most people, it's a better option as far as it's being more accurate. And uh, like I said, it'll do everything the 47 will. The only thing that's really inferior to is it, its magazines cost more money and the 30 caliber 7.62x39 is definitely going to have you know, more of an impact against like a wall or a car or something so if you really want to punch through a tree 47 might be a better choice if that's your thing but most of us want to hit and take down a person with this kind of rifle it's built for defense so if you want to take down a man I think this is a better choice I like my 47s I have several of them you guys have seen but I think if I was given the choice between these two, sorry about that, and uh, had to shoot somebody to keep my fat ass alive, I think I'd go with the 74. You know, assuming I didn't have to pay for magazines and didn't have to scrape together ammunition. <clears throat> if you're doing those things, you may uh, want to consider it. Oh, um, we we're going back to availability and what building it. The, another thing is is cost. Um, when you do find the 74s, they go for a premium price. Um, Usually thousand dollars. I see a couple for eight hundred dollars, and you know that's a lot of money, especially when you can get something like this, which fires a standard everyday round that we all know and love. I'm gonna sit it there and snuggle up and make all the slobs crap their pants. Uh, you know, fires a standard round. Use a standard AR-15 magazines. Of course, it being an AR-15 is infinitely customizable, it's way more ergonomic and you can buy it and build it yourself and you can do it in parts and steps instead of having to buy it all at once and you know it's still more modular and more ergonomic and more accurate <clears throat> not as reliable but superior in almost every aspect uh... this is this. i know i told you guys i sold one and now you're seeing this go oh you bought another one to replace it? no well, yes, but no, I bought this one and sold it. It's already sold. It's for a customer. Uh, and he wanted a simple AR-15 for himself, for his family. And uh, I may review it if I take it out and shoot it. I've got it all built, finished it last week, and haven't test fired it yet. But uh, it's a pretty good build. Um, I used that fixed front sight off the uh, other gun I sold. And because uh, it's got a low profile gas block. But uh, that's it. Let you know. See, I won't tell you where I got it from, but the, basically the company that was making these was selling it as a parts kit and they had mismarked the barrel. I'll show you. As, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. They, it's marked as 223, but it's actually a 556 five, barrel. They had mismarked them. So because of that, they were selling them the whole kit for $415 shipped. It was an amazing deal. And that's uh, not chrome, it was it melanite? Whatever the, the superior thing that it is replacing chrome lined. That, and it's all mil-spec parts. It just has a mismarked barrel. They even would send you a little packet with uh, five, five, six rounds shot out of it. And let's be really honest. Yes, there's a difference in chamber pressure, but most people shoot five, five, six out of two, two, three, and the gun doesn't blow up. If you've got a quality AR, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to say go do it, even though I pretty much did. But I'm not saying that. But it, in this case, it doesn't matter. It's chambered five, five, six. So I told him the guy that, and he was like, yeah, that's cool. I mean, you know... I even send the page showing it's on there, so the company warranties it, if, you know. And like I said, they shot 5.56 five, out of it, so you can see we're not kidding. And it's one seven twist barrel, so it'll shoot that, um, <coughs> um, the heavy grain, was it 77 grain, 5.56? Five, five, so anyway, sorry to go off a tangent there. 
Um, yeah, so, you know, normally I don't think you could get one all put together for 500 bucks, you know, 400, 413 plus the lower, but hey, it does happen every once in a while. The Delton rifle kit's about 480, so it's a little more expensive and it's not, I don't think it's chrome, but you know, you get the idea. So why would I buy a 74 over a 556? And to tell you the truth, that's a hard question for me to answer. Um, if it's your first rifle, the only real advantage of 74 is one, it's going to be more reliable, and two, it's completely idiot proof. Well, the AR-15 isn't complicated to use. If it's your very, very first rifle, um, the AK is definitely a, an, a simpler design to use. I mean, you pull the charging handle, the bolt goes back versus the, you know, the the charging handle that's not connected, or uh, you know, or the well, that's, that's pretty much it. But the idea is that AK-74, I believe, is a simpler design to use. But we're not a bunch of hairy-backed, you know, tundra-plowing slobs. You know, the average person can figure out how to use an Air-15, especially since most people who buy one have an interest in learning how to use it, take care of it, clean it. So, you know, yeah, the first 10 minutes, it might be better with the 74, but if you show them how it works and show them a couple of videos online or just put them in a the general direction, they can run an AR-15. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. You can figure out how to use one, and everybody does. Hell, the first one I got, I bought it. I had no idea how it worked. I bought the really crappy carbon 15 one, and uh, <clears throat> found out I had a gimped, shitty rifle, and I ended up selling it. In, or no, actually, I gave that one to my brother, who he's going to end up selling it. He still got it. Speaking of which, eh, now I got him that AK, you don't need an AR-15. Anyway, um, yeah, so, in between the two, this is the more logical choice. But if you're a gun person like me, you've already got a couple of these, and you're looking at an AK, maybe you should get a 74 first. You probably saved up your money. 47s are still a dime a dozen, you can find them anywhere. But it's hard to find a 74. And uh, the Russians are still using the 74M, which is just the M stands for modernized. Although I really wonder if the M in the Russian alphabet is the same M in the Latin alphabet. You would think it would be C or Q or something, you know, those stupid sort of like idiot Russian letters are. But anyway, you know, they're, they're upgrading to the 2012, but this is that's Russia. And despite the Call of Duty kids fapping over how great Russia is, Russia doesn't have a whole lot of money. And their 74s are going to be around and their armed forces for a long time. So while we are looking to replace the R-15 in the West, and with all the glorious money we have and resources, we still haven't replaced it because we can't find anything that make, that's all around better. You know, we found guns that do this better, do that better, do a lot of things better, but nothing that just just says this is ten times better than the M16A or 15 in every way. You know, and totally worth the money for upgrading. We're still using it. It's that good. I know people are like, well, you know, they've been looking for a replacement for 20 years. Yeah, and they still haven't found one. What does that tell you? It's a gun. It's a very simple machine. You know, if there was a massively better gun out there that just all around kicked its ass, we'd be using that. We'd still be using a gun, you know, come out of the late 50s, early 60s, at a Stoner's design. We'd be using I mean, we, we piss away so much money on the military-industrial complex. Pfft, guns are nothing. They leave these things in countries, and they move out sometimes. It's, there's no point. So, you know, for all the fanboys talk about how, you know, it's, it's obsolete, yeah, I mean... It still kills people dead. There's a lot of people around, there are around now who, uh, you know, met their end with it, and they haven't found anything better to replace it with. You know, they ACR. I don't think he went to trials. The Scar Light. They were like, yeah. You know, they like the Scar Heavy with the Scar Light, the fish gun, the X9. That didn't, you know, that thing melted. So, gonna be here for a while. And I think the same thing with the 74. It's they they've got money to replace it, or they've got the idea to replace it, but they don't have the money. Well, I'm sure the 2012 is better, although I heard we are going to get it. So, man, I went off on a tangent there on the end. Sorry about that. So, anyway, in conclusion, um, I think if you're looking at a 47 and a 74 and you have the money, seriously consider the AK-74. Um, I think it's superior to the 47 in most ways. If you are looking for a semi-automatic rifle um, for, I guess, home defense, personal defense, you know, for you know that 100 to 500 yep meters yards um, between Air 15 and the AK 74, you could go with either one. I mean, I'm more of an AR person than an AK person, so I think for less money, more accuracy, easier to find parts and ammo, I'd go with the AR 15. But I would look really close at the 74, especially if they start coming out with those Magpul mags. The Magpul makes or Magpul makes mags for. I mean, you can get Tapcos and 
Pro Mags, but you know, you know what I'm saying. For a really good quality one, um, and the price never comes back down. But you can buy parts kits and build them um, if you're good with your hands and good with metalworking. They're not hard to build. I am not, and AR-15s are challenging enough for me to build. They're not at all hard, but um, they have a lot of small parts that can fly around a lot. And uh, I do have a guy I know who's local who does build AKs for fun. <clears throat> He's got all the nice nifty industrial tools and presses and rivets and all that kind of stuff. So he could turn out a 74 no problem for me. Um, so if you know somebody who's, even if you're basic metal working, if you've got a press and you've got, you know, so a few jigs or you can make your own jigs with it, you can build a 74. It's not hard to do. If the Russians can do it in a factory completely shit-faced on vodka, there's no reason you can't do it. So... Anyway, guys, I'm sorry. I, I kind of went rambling on a little bit of a tangent there. I tried to stick with the topic, but uh, when I'm doing this without a script, I, I tend to go off, as you guys well have seen. I wanted to fill you in on a few things um, with the channel. Um, I can't promise you the next video is going to be. Um, I really like to go shooting. It's getting into winter time now, and I much prefer the cold over the hot, the heat, hot, to shoot in. But with my job, I, I can't plan anything anymore because every time Friday comes up, I always get work for the weekend. So... <laughs> Um, I do want to shoot the grand. I do want to do a full review on the AR LRWRC and um, a couple other things. So, uh, like I said, keep it. You know, I mean, send me some more PMs if you guys got any more ideas. If there's a question on piece of equipment I've got, you guys have seen, you want me to do a review on or tell you about it, I'm more than happy to do that. That's an easy video. I can make that in a couple hours. Um, <clears throat> really, really hate doing impromptu videos. Um, so I guess that's it. I guess we'll stop it here because I've rambled long enough. So anyway. AK forty or AK seventy four. If you're bucking it, if you're looking at AKs, consider one. If you're looking at it in the AR, consider it. But uh, spend your take your time and uh, make a good decision. That's it, guys. Tired of rambling. See ya.